Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share some things that I have found on some recent trips to thrift stores and estate sales and kind of go through my thought process on some of the more unique things that I found and what made me decide that this would be a good thing to purchase. Um, the main thing that I do when I'm shopping at thrift stores and things like that is to look for items to go into my junk journals. So anything that could be a journal page, um, something interesting. I'm always looking for things that are from kind of like the 60s and 70s, uh, but I will look further back, you know, 40s and 50s, um, if something catches my eye, which you'll see in a minute. And I'm also looking for different kinds of ephemera. For instance, these flashcards here. I found these on a recent trip and I really like these mainly because not only because they're very useful um, to use as journal cards and uh, things like that, but I like them because they have this beautiful kind of patina on them and it's sort of a yellowy cream color. And I really just like the way that looks. It kind of shows you it's, it's old and... Um, it, it looks perfect in, in journals like this. And I like these because they have uh, pictures on them as well. So they always can kind of go with the theme of your journal. And these are two-sided, but there is still room to kind of write in some journaling um, and just kind of get creative with it. You could even do collage on one side and, and journaling on another. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this. But so I, I'm mainly looking for things for those types of junk journals. You may be looking for different things, um, depending on, you know, how, what ages of the items you like to go into your journals. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show you what I like, but I think we can all kind of follow the same uh, path, though, when we're shopping. And so that's, those are some of the tips that I want to give today and maybe show you how to dig deeper. And maybe when you're looking at something, you don't just see a box of flashcards. Oh, I don't really like those but see a box of something else you could do with them. So uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, so the next thing I found was this uh, bag of vintage buttons and it was all of these buttons included in the bag. I am not somebody that can sew, but I do sew on paper sometimes, but I don't really know how to sew a button other than using a needle and thread uh, just really quick, kind of the basic way to, to sew a button. But I do appreciate vintage buttons, and I think you can use them for a lot of things in junk journals. I love the idea of some of the buttons, depending on, some some buttons are flat on the back. Others have that little, I forget what it's called, it's like a little hook on the back um, that you could actually uh, clip off with a uh, some little snips if you wanted to. And you could have a flat button that you could put on the corner of a page. So when you turn it, it's kind of easier to kind of grab onto the page. And that could be kind of a little decorative um, item to grab onto when you, as you turn a page. If you like to sew, there's a lot of things you could do sewing buttons onto pages. Um, that would be something too. Um, but I just, I love the look of vintage buttons. I think they're just really pretty. But the other thing that you get with the vintage buttons, and this would be also for any type of, you know, sewing kits or things that you find, you know, bags of uh, trim and rickrack and things like that are the cards and the, the backings that the items come on. So since these are vintage buttons, all of these cards are kind of have that vintage look too. And so I think you almost get like a two for one when you're purchasing the, the buttons. So you get the buttons, but then you get these really great uh, backing cards with them that you can use for journaling. Uh, you can uh, use them as like a little pocket, you know, put foam tape around the sides of them and, and leave the top open, use them as a, as a pocket. Um, lots of things you can do with them. So when I look, or when I see, you know, bags of sewing items, I always, I tend to look more towards the, the card backings because there's definitely things you can do with those. And I don't think this bag has any, but I do have some that I've saved. A lot of times the cards will be, have a back that opens. So it's almost like uh, a little a folded card. And what you can do with that is actually sew it right into your journal. And you have a really cute little card that's sewn in there, almost like if you sew a greeting card in. And um, so that's that's some great ways to use these little button cards too. So, so I was excited to find these. I've never found a bag of buttons this big before that are vintage. So these are gonna be very exciting to work with. So kind of along the lines of sewing, as I mentioned, I don't really 
So I do have a sewing machine, but I do love sewing boxes and I love to use them as storage pieces in my craft room. I have a small sewing box that I use for beads and little charms that I really like. And then I just found this one. This is a sewing cat caddy. It's, um, it's small enough that I can definitely um, use it in my craft room for storage. But I, that's what I really like about this. And I like the, the kind of basket weave top. That kind of caught my eye. I, I love anything basket weave. And it kind of goes with the, the decor in my, my craft room. But that's something else you can think about, too. If you, you, you know, you don't want to, um, you know, unless you collect things, certain things um, for furnishings, you don't want to kind of, um, it's easy to want to get, take everything home from the, the antique mall or the, the thrift store. But you kind of have to think about, all right, am I really going to use this? And so something like this sewing box, I always think, okay, what can, how can I use this for storage and for decor in my craft room? And so that's a great way to kind of personalize your craft space. If you really see something you love like this, um, if you can find a way to use it in your craft room, then definitely um, think about purchasing it. Um, I actually have a blog post that I can link to that talks about ways to personalize your craft room to kind of make it fun to go into it and make it kind of like an escape just for you. So, so when I saw this, I was, I was excited. I said, you know, I can really, I, I'm definitely going to be able to use this for something. And I'm actually thinking of transferring some of my vintage um, trim and binding into this little caddy because I think that's a way to kind of keep track of all the things that are actually vintage and kind of have them in one spot. So, and this is nice and compact. It can just fit on the shelf, but let me show you what's inside. Cause it actually came with some items inside, which again, it's kind of like a twofer. You get, get uh, more for your money this way. Um, so it's got a little box that, or a little tray that comes out and inside there were these little clips, which right away I'm thinking, um, for like ribbons around your journal covers. You can use these for fasteners, a couple of different types of fasteners here. I think these are for little belt loops, but these are great. And then there's some extra needles. I'm not sure what this is. It looks like it's for pies, but I'm sure that's not what it's for. Uh, so if anybody knows, <laughs> leave a comment below. Like I said, I, I don't sew a lot other than a couple stitches on paper. So I'm not sure what this is for. It's not really sharp, so I'm not sure, but but maybe it can be useful. Uh, but at the bottom here, there's some few, a few little different kinds of, there's repair tape, some more needles, and uh, some hooks, hook eyes and loops. And again, again, it has a really cute tag on the back of it. And then some safety pins. And then this interesting tool, it's a dot snapper kit. And I'm not sure if it's complete or not. It actually hadn't opened it yet, so let me see. I'm not sure if that's all, it must be the whole tool. I'm not sure how you use one, so I'd have to look this up online. But, um, so you can attach snaps to clothing. So um, this actually might come in handy for paper. So I have a little plastic snap kit that I use sometimes for, for papers and little envelopes. So this might be kind of fun to try. I don't know if it comes with any snaps or not, but, but even the box is kind of nice too. Um, using that for storage or something. So I'm definitely thinking about using this um, as decor and putting some of my uh, trim and, and bindings in here. So so that was a nice little find. So I, I am trying not to buy too many books because I really don't need any more. But this one caught my eye. It was kind of one of those situations that I've talked about where you're ready to leave and something kind of jumps out at you. <laughs> and it's in it's in a spot where it doesn't really belong and it sort of catches your eye. So this happens to me almost every time I go to a vintage store. Um, I always find something that doesn't belong in the section and it's always something that I'm interested in. So this is a home decoration book and it's actually from 1940 which I have a lot of decorating books from the 70s, 80s, um, maybe the 60s. I, have, I think I have something from the 60s, but I don't have anything from the 40s. And I, and I do have some older items that might kind of fit in with this if I do kind of a journal theme that kind of goes further back. So um, this has a lot of black and white photos, but it's got a lot of color photos too. Let me see if I can find one. Oh yeah, right here. 
So this would be like a 1940s living room or office. And I don't know. I just, I like, I like decorating books and um, I like that couch. So it's just kind of something fun. And again, if you don't want to, if you see, have a book like this and you don't want to, you know, use the pages or anything, just you put it on your bookshelf. You know, if it's, if it's something you really enjoy, like I enjoy interior decorating. Um, I do have a lot of older books that I'll just keep for fun. And um, it's fun to fit, they're fun to flip through and kind of see what, what people did a long time ago. So um, I'm not sure how I'm going to use this, but I definitely wanted to pick this up because it was it was on a deep discount. Plus, um, I just like the time period it was from. So next, I found this kind of random calendar, and I find these a lot. And I actually like to collect calendars from different years. So this is an old, um, I think it's a bank calendar. And the, the thing I liked about this was, um, it's got a little bit of staining on it, but the pages, I'll show you a cleaner one, uh, they're made up of their pockets. So you have the, the calendar on one side, and then it's got kind of a pocket right here. So that would be really fun to attach to a journal page. And then the other side has, I think they're all like this. Yep, the other side has a recipe of the month. So that's really fun. And it's from the 70s, which um, makes the recipes really fun, too. <laughs> so um, this was definitely great to find. And I can get a lot of use out of this because you get 12 months worth of pages in here. So um, I'll definitely use that for something. Uh, another thing I you've seen in my shop, I have a uh, freezer box cover journal, like a mini journal made from a freezer box. And I actually ended up finding these new freezer boxes and they're small enough again to turn into journals and I like this one because it's blue and it's got the snowflakes on it which would be perfect for Christmas so I'm thinking maybe around Christmas time I make some journals using these boxes the only thing I saw that might be difficult is so it's so when I grab a freezer box like this kind of open it this would be the spine right here. And then I'd use it and open it like that. And I'd probably take this off and open it like a book that way. It's a little narrow. So what I might do is kind of reinforce the front of another uh, journal cover using this as kind of a decoration. So sort of glue this to the front of a journal cover and have the spine be this wide and kind of have the spine attached and um, use it that way. Or again, another thing you could do is you know, kind of trim it out and just use the front. Um, but there's a lot of different things I, I think I could try. So so I just got a couple of these to, to try them out. Um, another thing, I mean, they're boxes, so you could actually store things in them. If you have um, certain, you know, items, you could, you could another, uh, this would be a good place to store um, ribbon and trim. You know, you kind of store it in this box, open it up, and you can kind of display it on your uh, bookshelf or something like that, or your craft shelf and have all the trim kind of mixed up in there and you just pull out what you need. That's that's another option too. So it'd be good for decor and storage too. So I definitely like those. This is another example of uh, the backing and the actual product being useful. So I love these vintage decals. These are kind of the old transfers that you'd put on furniture and things like that or on your flower canisters. And so I found I have quite a few of these and these are different. I like, and I actually like the colors of these. They're orange and blue. Uh, these, I, I just picked up two of these, but on the back, again, you've got the, the instructions and it's got this great kitchen, kind of a sixties looking kitchen, or actually it's probably older than that fifties looking kitchen. And um, so that's just fun to have as a journal page or a, some sort of like addition to your, uh, journal and it's actually got these little clips here to hold in the decals you could put this in a journal and put in a uh, piece of journaling paper attach it in there and use that to pull out and you can write things on that so there's a lot of different ways to use the the cards that the uh, decals come on to so this is really good find too I'm always loving any type of game uh, game sheets and I love canasta I just love the look of um, you know, the front of the, these covers here. So again, the covers you can use on their own for kind of an insert for a journal. And then inside they've got these two different sides 
that you can use um, for journaling too. So that's a great, great lines for journaling. So I picked up two of those. And then here's another sewing item. These are um, iron text patches and they're for corduroy. And I liked this because not only is it an envelope and it's in really good shape, because a lot of these aren't always in such good shape. It's got the actual corduroy piece in it. So there's something you could use in your journal. You could use it as a journal, you know, something in the front of your journal. Um, it's kind of like a background. It's got this great texture to it. So you've got that piece, you've got the envelope itself. And then a great way to decorate the envelope, I think would be to, uh, this has like a little window in it. And right away I was thinking some kind of a shaker. So you could cover this with uh, plastic and then make kind of a little shaker behind it. And that would be really fun too. Maybe a shaker with mini uh, sequins or little sewing uh, themed sequins. They had little sewing shapes or something like that. So I thought that was really fun too. So again, keep your eye out in the sewing section because there's always interesting things to find. And then um, the last thing I found that was another sewing theme is this um, sewing handbook. And I like this. It's got a little damage on the cover, but I probably wouldn't be using that. Inside, they had a bunch of, there were a bunch of pages inside and there was this envelope for tr with tracing paper in it. And the actual paper is still there, which again is just a fun texture, something you could add to a journal. And then you've got the envelope here. That's, you know, we all love envelopes in our journals. So that's a little fun addition you can have. This had a uh, little insert that was about making some Christmas items. So again, you've got, you know, a Christmas journal, something you could add to that. And then just some other really nice uh, little ads and different, I just love the graphics. Really great. This has got a lot of little fold outs here. I just love all this. And then inside, I just really liked the color combo in here, kind of the lime green with the black. And it's all kind of sewing, how to, how to do different sewing techniques and things like that. So again, some, can make some really great um, sewing or journal pages, or you could fold them up and make an envelope out of them. There's lot, lots of different things you can do. Um, but I love all the images on here and just, just the color combination is really nice. So that's just a few of the things that I found, but these were kind of like where my mind was going when I'm looking at things. So always keep an open mind when you're shopping for journaling items. You never know, you know, the multiple ways you could use something. And a lot of times I will also just kind of grab something because it just, it catches my eye and I know I'm going to like it. But um, as long as it's not really expensive, I mean, I don't like to pay a ton of money for something if I'm not sure about it. But um but you grab it. And then a lot of times what I do when I get home is I'll kind of go over everything and kind of un, you know, unwrap all my things that I got and just kind of think about, okay, what can I use this for? And it's kind of fun that, that kind of when you get home and kind of go through all your stuff, you kind of revisit the possibilities and it's, it's really fun. So I always have a good time with that. So, uh, Leave me some comments about what you all like to do when you go vintage shopping for your junk journals, um, what your favorite things to find are. And I'm just curious to see um, any tips that p other people might have when you're um, shopping at estate sales or antique malls or things like that. So, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.